Coming up next on Ask the Tech Guy, a port forwarding primer. Stay tuned. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Hey everybody, Leo Laporte here. It's time for Ask the Tech Guy. I'm your tech guy. And Grandma Carolyn <laughs> writes in with a great question, one near and dear to my heart. She writes, Leo, please help this frustrated grandma. I've had a free Plex account for years. After I switch to a DSL modem and a separate router, I can no longer reach my Plex from a remote location. For years, I've tried to research and solve this problem. Can you help? Um, both the modem and router are by Netgear. They work fine inside the house. Grandma Carolyn, you have a port forwarding problem. And I'm not sure why it worked in the past, except maybe somebody set this up. Maybe you had universal plug and play. You, the problem is your router, your new router, your Netgear, is confused about the inbound Plex requests. You're sitting out here at the Motel 6 and you want to see the videos stored on your Plex server inside your house. You fire up your browser, you enter in the address, and it goes, huh? I don't know. That's because your router doesn't know what to do with that inbound request. It says, I don't know what you want, and it just silently drops it. And that's actually a good thing. It's why a router really is an excellent firewall. But if you want to get through the firewall, you need to do some extra configuring. Now, there is a really good support article from Plex at support.plex.tv. If you Google troubleshooting remote access, Plex support, you can read this whole article or go to this URL. It's a kind of a long one. Um, but I'll give you the gist. And actually, this is useful for anybody running any kind of service inside your house, a service that you want outside. You have to teach the router that any incoming traffic should go to this particular computer. We call that port forwarding. The first thing to do is you can use universal plug and play, UPnP. Uh, and that's probably the easiest way to set this up. Go into your router, make sure UPnP is turned on. Go into your Plex server, make sure it's turned on. The only reason I hesitate in recommending this is it's a potential security problem. Universal Plug and Play was created by Microsoft for its Xbox servers. It's so that you could start a game server on your Xbox inside your house and that people could join that game. In order to make that possible without a lot of fiddly bits, Microsoft set up something called UPnP that lets the Xbox talk to the router and say, hey, I want to serve a game, open up these ports. But that's problematic because it means anything inside your network can do the same, including malware. I mean, a malware author would love to get on your computer and as soon as it runs on your computer, talk to the router and say, hey, stop being such a good firewall. Let some of this traffic in. So Steve Gibson and I both recommend disabling UPnP on your router. I know it's convenient, but it's also a security risk. Fortunately, there's a better way, a more secure way to handle this. It just takes a little more work on your part. You're going to have to change some settings inside your router. And I'm going to show you on the screen uh, doing it with our Asus router. And I should point out that every router, even within the Netgear line, looks a little different, has different terminology. So you might have to kind of translate this into Netgearese to work on your system. But I'll show you as I walk through it what it's going to look like. First, you're going to go into the routing settings. You know how to get into your router, right? There's a special address or there might be a, a special URL you enter. And then you'll have to use a password to log in, the admin password. Uh, while you're in there, might not be a bad idea to secure your router a little bit more. Turn off 
WAN access, that is the ability to modify your router from outside your network. And here's a good time to turn off UPnP. Those are that's on on almost all routers by default. Uh, of course, if you haven't changed your administrative password, absolutely you want to do that too. But assuming you've done all that, we're logging in. Now the first thing you're going to do is set up something called port forwarding. You're going to have to browse around in the menu to find this. Essentially what you're going to do is tell the router, if I get if you get any requests that uh, for Plex, I want you to send those requests to my Plex server. So there's two things you have to do to make this work. First of all, you have to know where your Plex server is. It's internal IP address. Internal IP addresses always begin with either 192.168 or 10.0. Those are internal addresses. Look for those. Your, your router certainly will have a list of attached devices, so you want to go down through that list till you find the Plex server. And then you'll see the number. In my case, it's 192.168.1.148. That's my Plex server. So make a note of that. Write that down. That's the address your Plex server is at. Now, you want it to always be there. So you're going to want to go into router settings and, and do something called a port reservation. Again, it may have a different name, but that's the official name. You're going to reserve that particular IP address so that if the router reboots or the computer reboots, it doesn't give it a different address. That's typically the case. It will always give it that specific address. That's critical because port forwarding requires that address. So you've made a note. You've got that address. You've written it down. You've reserved it. So it'll always be, your Plex server will always be at that address. Now you go into port forwarding. And you're going to say, I want any traffic on a particular port, the Plex port, to go to 192.168.1.48 to go to my Plex server. You can make that number anything you want. You can figure your Plex server to be anything you want. The default is 32400. 32400. You might as well leave it. There's no security by changing it. So you might as well leave it at 32400. So you're going to go and port forward. You're going to tell your router, when I see traffic, when you see traffic at 32400, you send that to 192.168.1.48. You send traffic on this port to this server. That's called port forwarding. It's a rule in your router that says every time traffic comes for the Plex server, send it to the Plex server. Don't block it. Don't drop it. Don't ignore it. Send it to the Plex server. Now you've opened a port and you'll be able to communicate. There's one more thing you should be aware of. Most home internet service providers do not guarantee static IP addresses. You have a public IP address. You know, that's the IP address that everybody else sees when you surf around. You only have one per account. Your router, that's why you have a router. Your router's got internal IP addresses so it can have multiple computers. Mine is 75.138.2.72. Uh, Every ISP has a pool of numbers they'll pull from. Each number has to be unique. That one's yours. The problem is most ISPs, if you reboot your router, you reboot your machine, or sometimes you know, at whim will change your IP address. Now, that's important because that's how you're getting to your Plex server. You're typing in that address. So you're, in fact, you're probably typing in that address, colon 32400, that says go to this particular computer with this particular port and talk to it. Your router is handling which computer it goes to, but you need to know your home IP address. You can go somewhere like IP Chicken or type what is my IP address in Google from any computer in your home system to find out what that address is. But again, unless you've paid for a static address, that might change. So either get a static address from your internet service provider. They don't hand those out very often and often they charge more for it. Or you can use a service. Your router may already have this built in called Dynamic DNS. There are a couple of there are many companies that do this. Uh, the most popular are Dyn D Y N dot com. That's for dynamic DN, IP address, dynamic DNS. There's also no IP dot com. No IP dot com. Uh, both of them for a fee will handle this. You'll go to an address at dyn.com or at noip.com and it will have a client running on your internal network that will periodically check its IP address and let 
it know, and so it does the forwarding. Your router may have this built in. That's the best way to do it. So check to see if your router has something about dynamic IP or dynamic routing. That's so that you can type in the address. You know, I go one step further. I actually uh, have set up a domain name and attached an IP address to that domain name. So I don't have to type in a number. I can just type in the domain name and that will automatically launch my uh, Plex server. So this is, I know this is a little complicated. The good news is you only have to do it once. Uh, probably your previous router was set up to do this. The new router, all of a sudden it broke. That's how you'll set that all up. Um, I should say there is one other issue. Unfortunately, lately, Internet service providers have taken to blocking some kinds of traffic for, they say, security reasons. I say it's anti-competitive. They maybe don't want you to run a Plex server. They'd rather you buy their expensive on-demand service than run uh, a Plex server. So if they are blocking Plex traffic, it won't matter what you do. You just Your Plex server will be unreachable. So you might, if you still can't get this working, call your internet service provider and say, are you blocking Plex traffic? If they are, I think it's probably time to get a new ISP. I know, that's easier said than done. Thank you. Great question, Grandma Carolyn. If you can do this, if you get this all set up, you get a gold star. You are a geek. Our show today brought to you by LastPass, from access to authentication to passwords. LastPass manages every entry point in your business so you can mitigate risk while improving employee productivity. And LastPass goes above and beyond to ensure security for all its users. Your data is encrypted and decrypted at the device level. Increased security doesn't have to be complex for your business. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. That's lastpass.com slash twit. Well, that's it for this week's Ask the Tech Guy. We do the show every Monday. Subscribe so that you get it automatically and you can listen to it at work, to uh, going to work on uh, Tuesdays. Just search for Ask the Tech Guy in your favorite podcast application. If you search for the Tech Guy, you'll also get the radio show. You can have lots of me, maybe more than you really want. If you have a question for Ask the Tech Guy, just email askthetechguy at twit.tv. I'm your tech guy, Leo Laporte. Thanks for watching or listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email askthetechguy at twit.tv.